<sighs> All right, everybody, how are you? I'm back with another vlog. I'm gonna do a hunt recap. Um, I know, although I've posted a little highlight video of my season, I thought it would uh, be good to explain some stuff. Uh, it was a pretty interesting year, and again, like some stuff I thought just, you know, kind of needed some explaining. So, you know, to start, as usual, I, I took advantage of the bow season and did some bow hunting. Uh, got some pretty good opportunities, but unfortunately some things kind of happened and, and went wrong. Um, you know, so again, this year was a little bit different. Uh, it was me and my brother, Anthony, uh, as usual, but this year we actually tagged along with my uncle uh, and his uh, son-in-law. So it was kind of, again, a little bit different, different style of hunting. And, you know, my uncle's been hunting that same area that we hunt for 35 years. So he knows the area very well. So he got to point out a few different things that we normally don't uh, look at. It was a nice, fun learning experience. And again, getting to, getting to spend some time with more family is always fun as well. Opening day, uh, myself and Anthony, my uncle and Brooks, uh, Sylvester's son-in-law, uh, we made our way to our normal lookout spot. Um, you know, watched the sunrise, it was great. Um, didn't, you know, we didn't see his animals first, but uh, we did end up spotting a bull that was way too far away. There's no way we were going after him. So we kind of just kept our eye on him and just hung her down to see if he would come closer. Uh, but then all of a sudden we look up 500 yards away and there's a fairly large cow just feeding her way up the hill that we normally watch them. That's where we watch them go up the hill and we'll you know, make a play on them. Unfortunately, I had a bull only tag this year. Uh, so we kind of just hung back and just kept an eye on her to see if a bull was kind of kicking around with her or, you know, just if a bull came out. Um, so again, we watched her for about 45 minutes and like, she just took her time, had no idea we were anywhere in the area and we just kind of hunkered down waiting to find a bull. Uh, so at around nine o'clock, we actually did spot a bull. He was about seven, 800 yards uh, down into the valley. Uh, usually we, we kind of see them come up that valley and they feed their way across. So we decided to make a play. Um, by the time we got there, the bull had actually moved his way back into the trees. Um, we're not quite sure why at the time. Uh, so we kind of took a wide turn to try to play the wind and see if we can, you know, find a way through the trees back up to a little outgrove where he was too. Um, but it was unfortunately it was just too thick. So there was no way. So Anthony decided to walk up around and kind of take a big wide turn upwind to see if his wind would blow down to the moose and shove the bull, shove him down towards me. <laughs> As I go to get set up into position, there's a uh, a coyote about 20 yards away, just bounding off in the grass and bounding away from me. So at the time, I never thought nothing of it. I just was so focused on that bull. I just said to myself, oh, cool, there's a coyote. Then I hear Anthony yelling that the bull's coming my way, but he stopped halfway. Um, Anthony had my camera. And uh, as Anthony kept moving closer to the bull to see if the wind would push him down, the, the, the bull clearly knew that the, uh, the coyotes were down close to me and they didn't want to go down that way so the bull turned and actually kind of charged Anthony. Uh, you'll see on camera, I mean it's a 35 millimeter lens, it's very close um, and the bull never pays attention to Anthony at all, just kind of just keeps focusing down into the trees where the coyotes and, and me were, uh, were hanging out. So that, that was kind of unfortunate, it's the first time I've ever had that experience where a coyote blew a stock on us. But it was still cool because my uncle, uh, even though he's been spending so much time there, they're, they're big rifle hunters and they don't, you know, get close up with moose very often. So he got to watch us get really close and, and see us. So it was a very nice experience to shoot with him. Uh, later on that day, as we were, uh, went back to the same area to see if that, the bull would kind of come back around maybe, uh, we spot another one, again, about 900 yards away on uh, the side of a hill. And myself and Anthony made a play. We, we stalked in. We got it within the 60 yards uh, where we watched him bed down and we got above him. But by the time we got to above him, obviously our wind or we made too much noise and, and he heard us and he kind of started walking away. And, and I would use wind gusts to make a stock and get closer. And last that I checked, I was 24 yards away and he was on the other side of some trees, couldn't get a shot. Uh, then all of a sudden a big rain shower came in, so I decided to make a play around. 
and when the time it took me to go around the, uh, the trees the heat where he was he uh, he moved off quietly and we never saw him again so it was a little uh, disappointing but at the same time it was fun you know we did get a couple of stocks on opening day and we you know we saw you know four or five moose spirits were still kind of high that we had time and you know we knew the area well so we figured things would work out and the next day we got a chance to go up uh, it was just too foggy couldn't see anything so we just kind of hung around to see if the fog would lift but it didn't and you know calling wasn't working so that was a bust on day two uh, day three was another was an evening hunt we went to go a bit farther ran up over the hills where we where we normally see them feeding up to and it paid off within minutes uh, Brooks spotted a bull um, well at the time we didn't realize it was a bull but we you know we made a decision to go in closer and see if we could uh, see if we could find out and identify it and when we did we did find out that it was a it was a spike bull so he was in a big thick group of trees but we could just we could still see him and you know the wind wasn't really in our favor but we you know we, we made a play we got within 60 and then by the time I got in 60 uh, I could just see him he just moved off in the woods and disappeared so we lost him then right so that's it again three days and we made three stocks so can't really complain too much about that um this year was a bit different as well um i picked up a canoe for some family trips and just some going in back country for uh, camping trips so my friend matt who's uh canoe and dog explorers he uh he talked me into going to do a, a back into the avalon wilderness reserve um so we knew there was a pond that led that led back to the the border of the reserve so myself and anthony and matt took a weekend we decided to paddle back so we paddled back and uh, we got to the reserve and we set up our tents and we walk out that evening to to glass within about an hour we we spot a very very large animal he was 1200 yards as the crow flies uh, but he was on top of a hill and um, there was no way we could make a play without with the daylight we had left because we had been paddling all day um, but it's pretty good when he's 1200 yards away and we can see his antlers with her with her plain eyes without using binoculars so he was a very large animal and he actually had two cows with him as well so it was it was pretty exciting we thought that the next day we'd get up and uh calling for clear day so and cool at night so we were hoping that we'd be able to get him out unfortunately the winds were calling for a little bit too high for paddling back so if we decided to stay uh we might have actually been windbound uh, on the reserve for longer than we expected because we wouldn't be able to paddle back it just would have been too dangerous so we made the decision that night to only spend one day uh, one evening and then the next morning we got up right away we broke camp and we paddled back and we got back just in time because the last 300 meters uh it was it was very sketchy waves were coming up over the side of the boat but you know we did make it back it was wasn't too bad we spent back in a normal area for that night and we saw a cow 900 yards away we decided to make a play on it because at this time i actually had a not-for-profit license for choices for youth um i came into that through a friend of uh, outdoor pros uh, i was approached and asked if i could take care of that tag for them and i thought it was uh, it was pretty honored to be able to do it uh, you know choice for youth do, are, is a great program and they do they do run a lot of programs for some troubled youth so uh, i was happy to help out with that Matt actually had his rifle, so he was the uh, the shooter that night for the Choices for Youth, which is an either sex tag. So we made a play. We got to within 100 yards, but the cow was bedded and we couldn't see her because she was just up on the just up over a ridge. And when Matt went in to get a bit closer to get a, a sight on her, she uh, she heard him kicking some rocks, got up and, and moved away. So couldn't make a play, but Matt's again, he's a, usually a rifle hunter. He's not used to stalking too much, but he did do a good job. It's just, it's unfortunate that the terrain kind of, kind of screwed him over a bit. After that was a little bit different for us because the area that we go, we're, we're, we know it very well and we know where the moose are. And it's not often that we go up there and that we, we don't see animals, but we spent the next four or five days uh, hunting very hard, covering a lot of terrain. And we never come across any animals. We never saw any. Um, and it was just, it was very weird. We kind of got disheartened a little bit because it's not often we go this long without seeing animals. But we stuck with it. And uh, the last day, uh, me and Anthony said we would go in and we'd go in just for the morning because we were all very tired. Sylvester couldn't make it. Brooks couldn't make it. Matt was just 
beat up with his, he got bad knees. So we said, we'll go in for just the morning. Me and Anthony are very tired, but we'll see what happens. If we don't get anything by 10 o'clock, then we will come out. Now, another thing that was very odd this year that we don't get beat to, the spot, to where we're going. Me and Anthony will always be up two hours before daylight. We'll be walking in the dark and we'll be setting up where we want to be well before sunrise so that we get to see an animal. We were a little bit slow that day. Again, we're a little bit extra tired and we may have stopped for an extra coffee on the way. There was two people that were there before us, two other hunters. And fair enough, hey, they beat us. They got to the spot and they were aiming to go right where we wanted to go. So like, what can you say, right? So we, we spoke to them. We let them know what our plan was and they told us that they wanted to go up there. And we said, well, you know, you were first here. So more power to you. You know, you get, you get first dibs on where you want to go. Uh, he did have an either sex license and I had a bull only. Further out the road, there was a trail that led to another nice area where we had been hearing from locals with cabins in the area that there's a, a cow and a calf and been walking through there every single day. So we told them, we said, you know, if you have an either sex, maybe you should go down there and we'll go up here because we got a bull only and we haven't been seeing very many bulls. They didn't want to listen to us. Maybe they thought we were pulling their leg and, you know, we were just trying to help them and be honest. They were new to the area and never hunted there before. But they stuck to their guns and they went to uh, the lookout where we would normally go. So I gave them advice on where to go and what to do and they went down. So we went to the spot where I told them to go to. Sure enough, we're set up and within 15 minutes we call out a bull. Now he's way too far away. We couldn't do anything or make a play and he wouldn't, he was stopped there. He wouldn't come up, he wouldn't make any move to the call. So we just kept an eye to him and kept calling periodically and still wouldn't move but we saw an animal just as we were getting ready to to kind of set up for breakfast i look over to my left and here 600 yards away is a bull so i immediately stop i call and he stops looks in our direction i call again and and he turned and made his way right to us we figured he would cover the ground a lot quicker but he was a bit slower so we kind of just still stuck around but we were we didn't think he was coming we thought he might have winded us or he might have hurt us so we were getting ready again to pack up we were going to go and i turn around and and here's the bull, 150 yards, walking up the hill, not a care in the world. I turned to Anthony, I had my rifle set up, and uh, I just made one call. I looked at Anthony, I said, what's the range? Now, I had ranged some trees before, and I'd, there was a couple that were 150, and there were a few that were at 200. And when I just laid down prone to my rifle, I saw trees, Anthony called, he stopped, and I just fired. And uh, I hit him high, but it was still in the vitals, it was still a long shot, it was a high long shot. Uh, he turned and, and he ran. He was hurt the whole time, we could tell. He ran about 100 yards and, and that was it. He was done. Like I said, it was very interesting. You know, we went through, you know, we had hunting with people that we never hunted with before. You got to see different parts of the country and it was, so that was pretty fun. And again, we still had the choices for youth tags. So we still had a long, uh, another, another hunt to go to and had a lot of work to do. So we processed my moose, got it to the butcher, um, and we, we regrouped, took a little break for about four or five days, and then we went back at it again. Myself and Anthony went out for a morning hunt. Lo and behold, that very next week, that morning, the same two people are there. They beat us again. I, it takes a lot to beat us there, but uh, th these people did it, and again, just keeps us on our toes now, so we're going to work a little bit harder to get to our spot. We offered our help and said, you know, we're going to go to another area again. If, uh, if you guys need help, give us a call and we'll come over. If we hear a gunshot, we'll come over. And if not, then, you know, we'll just assume we never got anything. So it was an unsuccessful morning. They left a little bit early and we left a little around the same time, around lunchtime. We were getting a bit tired. So two days later, I took um, Austin from Outdoor Pros. Myself and him went out and uh, went for a hunt. It was a pretty busy morning, even though that was a, it was a weekday. That was a Monday morning. There was still a lot of hunters in the area, which is a lot more pressure than what we, we normally see. Not really a good sign, I don't think, for the future for us, but... You know, we just got to be cognizant of there's other people going to be more in the area more lately. We set up and I did some calling and Austin was the shooter that day. And around that nine o'clock again, which seems to be a good time for us for moose. Uh, we were sitting down having our cup of tea and here comes out a little bull about 50 yards away, walking right towards us where, the, where we were calling from. So I managed to hand the rifle to, uh, to Austin. I made one call to stop him and Austin made a great shot and again the bull turned and ran 25 yards and and that was it he was done so it's pretty exciting like i said to to help out a charity and give them lots of meat for their programs to uh, help troubled youth and stuff so 
and Austin was very pleased as where he thought he wasn't going to get a hunt this year but he managed to do it and take a nice bull so that was very uh, very fun to do so I was hoping to do more recording uh, on my hunt this year but just being the only cameraman and being so focused on hunting sometimes is a bit hard so I filmed where I could and at the end of the day the memories are still there and and so that's that's the, really the main part right so but you know next year will be different I won't be hunting I'll be hunting but I won't be the hunter so I'll be able to film some more so you get to see some more from me then until then thanks for watching guys